Hey, Trevor Matthews from Refrigeration Mentor. Are you a refrigeration technician or an HVAC technician looking to get better at troubleshooting compressors? Looking to reduce your troubleshooting time on systems? I was a technician in the field for many, many years and I work at compressor manufacturers as lead trainers on compressors to get a better understanding on how they work, what makes them tick. And I built this free compressor troubleshooting guide to help technicians just like you. In the guide, there's going to be, it's going to talk about overheating or flood back and flooded starts, these different types of mechanical failures that you see maybe on a daily basis or a weekly basis or a monthly basis. And you need to understand what causes those failures because if you're replacing the compressor and you don't know what caused that failure, how long till that next one lasts or until it fails? This is a scroll compressor here. Here's the body here. This is discharge that comes out of here. Here's suction that comes back here. You need to make sure that you have the proper cooling coming back because this is a refrigerant cool compressor. So that return gas temperature needs to stay cool. But if this is coming back really warm because of system related issue, could be a leak, could be uninsulated and running through a hot space, could be one of many things. Compression ratio, pressure drop because of suction filter dryer in there. You need to understand that. And then in this guide that I'm gonna send you, there's gonna be images that you could compare to the actual compressor itself if you take it apart and you inspect it, or a semi-hermetic when you pull off the head and you pull off the pump. Because it's very important to take a look at that stuff. I, I as a mechanic, when I first started out for five, six, seven years, I, when I had electrical failure, I just said it was electrical failure that caused the compressor to fail. And I did know the root cause of that failure. And over the years, I started to learn and I started to train myself to understand why this caused it. And when you start understanding that at a deeper level, your troubleshooting time is going to be reduced. Your replacement time is going to be quicker. And you're going to have longer uptime when you understand this, especially on the maintenance side of, uh, of systems. This is the fixed this is the fixed scroll. So this is a axial compliance in the Copeland scroll. So they're axial compliant. So it raises up and down and it raises up and down by this floating seal. This floating seal push against this, the muffler plate underneath there. So you need to understand that because you could be running a compressor at a high compression ratio and it opens up. It opens this up or unbalances it and separates this. And all of a sudden the compressor is not pumping, but it's running. Doesn't mean the compressor's failed just means that your compression ratio is too high. When you have a high compression ratio, it causes more heat. And that high heat could lead to tripping off the compressor or it could potentially lead to a failed compressor from overheat. There's so many different types of compressors out there, different brands, so semi-hermetics, hermetics, scrolls, and scrolls and hermetic compressor. But understanding the different internals is so important. This compressor is going to trip off differently or have a different internal protectors than another scroll. Copa makes over 20 different types of scrolls, different capacity, different size, different internals. So you need to understand that when a compressor fails, what caused that failure? Over 30% of the compressors that go back to the leading manufacturers, there's nothing wrong with them. And in this guide, it's going to talk about those lead mechanical failures that cause the electrical failures. All you need to do is click the link into your name and email address, and I'm going to send you this free guide. And when you get the guide, you're going to look and you're going to see overheating. What causes overheating? You know, you could have a plug condenser. You could have a busted fan. You could have different issues that lead to that high compression ratio, too much gas in the system. Okay. And in the guide is going to say, okay, what is your discharge temperature? You need to check that. And when you start checking that stuff, it's going to give you an idea. And then when you have a failed compressor, you can look inside the compressor just like this. And you can tell from the images inside that, that guide what caused it. Inside there, it's also going to tell you about what prevents overheating and how to prevent it. So when you replace the scroll compressor, replace the semi-hermetic compressor, that you're not going to be back a week, two weeks, two months, two years later to replace that compressor because you know you fix that problem anyway. Will it fail from something else? Maybe. But you know you fix it from that problem. I also have many other videos that I'd love to share with you and talking about how to properly replace a head gasket, how to properly install compressors like a digital compressor or add a variable speed compressor on there. Um, but start off with this first free guide. The free guide is going to help you 
become better at troubleshooting a failed compressor and understanding what to do when you do have a failed compressor. My name is Trevor Matthews from Refrigeration Mentor, and I can't wait to share my knowledge with you.